Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europa, Naples, at least for the time being. That's going to be changing again very, very quickly. Uh, and I'm coming in today with this 2015 Mercedes-Benz S550. Uh, take a quick thing, a moment to appraise the situation. So, sorry I haven't been around too much, and I apologize for what I can already feel is going to be annoying wind noise. Hopefully it's not as bad as I suspect. Uh, but uh, again, yeah, I haven't done a video in a little over a week. Uh, part of that is I've been watching the news as I drink my whiskey every morning and thinking what an incredibly screwed up, ridiculous world that we are living in currently. Uh, you know, it's very strange to watch just 10 to 30 minutes of news and discover that everything you believed about everything uh, is apparently now not the case at all, that things have changed entirely, uh, 100%. It has to be the most screwed up point in American history in my lifetime. Uh, obviously, there were uh, incidents in other lifetimes that probably compared. I certainly understand how the greatest generation probably felt when they saw naked baby boomers, uh, you know, leaping around uh, San Francisco with, you know, flowers handing them to each other and, uh, you know, giving away stuff in free stores and not washing themselves for weeks on time. I, I get that level of revulsion now uh, that they must have felt because it really is quite ridiculous. I mean, it's just absolutely insane. Uh, what I read about Mount Rushmore the other day, I mean, for the love of God, can we not enjoy that some uh, dedicated guy carved some American heroes in the side of a rock uh, mountain somewhere up in South Dakota. I mean, does that have to be a bad thing now? Uh, apparently everything does. So uh, anyway, it's just becoming incredibly obnoxious and I, I just want to withdraw from it all and, uh, you know, go back into my social distancing routine and uh, just uh, stop watching the news, drink a little bit more whiskey and uh, maybe start enjoying cars a little bit more. And I'm going to start with this one. So again, 2015 Mercedes-Benz S550. Uh, it's nice I'm tripping over things here. Uh, this is the W222 platform. Uh, obviously followed the W221, although that's not always obvious in Mercedes uh, lineage. And it is the sixth generation S-Class. And the S is the standard of the world. I know that's a Gia, that's a Cadillac thing, but we're going to call it this car, the S, because this is the benchmark. This is the yardstick against which all other luxury cars are compared. Uh, even now, to the point of you could even bring Bentley and Rolls Royce into that. I mean, they've always held their own little lofty spot in the handmade segment, uh, and while the S has always been mass produced. Uh, but uh, even, you know, now the S is up in that level of sorts. I'll beat for a lot less money, but we'll get into all that as we go. Uh, so anyway, this is the yardstick. I mean, when you're pulling up somewhere in front of a very snazzy hotel or the UN building or uh, a house where a crime syndicate is meeting, uh, you can do it in an Audi or a BMW or uh, even a, you know, Hyundai Equus or whatever the hell those things are. And who cares? It's the guy who pulls up in the S class that's going to get the most respect and attention uh, because the S class is where it's at. I mean, if you're conducting global business, if you're, uh, you know, running, a, you know, the Bulgarian crime syndicate, if you're the Pope, if you're the Minister of Finance for Belgium, the S class is the transport of choice and uh, has been that way for six generations and will continue to be that way for the foreseeable future. Uh, in fact, I mean, this car has all the stuff on it that I crab about, all the little automated. I mean, this is basically a, a, a semi-autonomous car, uh, which means it's going to put up barricades around its little section of town and keep the police out while conducting stupidity inside. Oh, that's not what it means. It means it, means it drives itself and it does a lot of stuff itself that usually the driver has to do. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, that to me is the essence of not driving. It's the essence of, you know, being detached from the car, which is frankly the last thing I want to do. I want to feel like I'm driving. I want to feel like I'm in command. And uh, the S does away with that in the physical sense, but does give you that in the emotional and mental sense. I mean, you may not be driving the car, but you are the friggin' captain of the universe if you're driving this thing. So you're in control of something. Uh, but that said, on this car, this one's stickered at about 120. Belongs to a good friend of mine, by the way. Very nice 
nice guy. I won't name any names. Uh, his name's Ulf, a uh, German guy. Uh, don't really trust the Germans, but what are you going to do? Uh, but anyway, uh, Ulf, you know, gave me this thing. He wants me to sell it for him. Uh, we're probably going to put it on Bring a Trailer at some point. I'm not sure if this is the video we're going to use or not. Uh, but, uh, you know, now I've, I've completely lost track of where the hell I was. Completely lost track. <laughs> I am telling you, it's again, the whiskey therapy, the pills, the bad living, it's all adding up. Anyway, we'll just get back into it. So the master of the universe thing uh, is what this car is all about. And uh, it's it's gorgeous. It's understated. It's elegant. It's imposing without being ostentatious. Uh, the lines on it are subtle, yet very, very rigid. Uh, you know, like most S-Class, it, it has no sense of humor at all. I mean, this is not a car that's going to laugh at your jokes or be polite. Uh, it's just going to stare at you in a very menacing sort of way. And Ulf has made this one quite sinister. Uh, you you can see it's got sort of a blackout taillight thing going. It's got a little deck lid spoiler. Uh, the wheels have been all murdered out. The door handles, the window frames, the grill. Uh, even the pointy star on the hood has been murdered out on this car. And, uh, you know, many cars I would find that uh, annoying. But on this car, I do think it looks quite nice and sinister. It just has a lovely vibe to it. Uh, particularly when mated to the lovely crisp porcelain inside that, um, uh, that contrasts very nicely with the car. Anyway, let's just get into this thing, then I'll ramble on more about S's and such. But uh, I, I remember now what I was going to say, that the S has always been for Mercedes uh, their showcase, the way they introduce technology, the way they load it with features, be it luxury or safety or power. Uh, the S has always been ahead of the curve that the other companies then have to follow suit. And uh, it's no different with this one. Uh, Mercedes definitely gave Audi and BMW something to think about. Look at the big twice pipes at the bottom. Uh, the murdered out uh, star on the back and of course it has a power trunk because at some point it was determined that rich people shouldn't have to lift up a deck lid uh, but anyway got a nice big trunk in there you've got a couple of infant uh, retainer nets on either side of it uh, so you can stick your babies in there and they'll be nice and safe and sound won't roll around in the trunk and scratch up your cargo so uh, it's what a trunk should be and of course it's just big enough to put a human in which is fine again if you're part of that Belgian crime syndicate, uh, you got to be able to stuff a guy in the back of this thing, and uh, it will accommodate that. And then, of course, we got Ridge. You hear that shit? Do you hear them? I haven't heard those roosters in a long time. There's a bird right there sent to me. Probably the rooster sent him over as a scout. He's like, let's see why I walk up to him if he gets tough or if he flies off. Hopefully, he flies off. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? The Bulgarian crime syndicate. Yeah, you have to be able to stuff people back there, which this will accommodate. To close it, you just press that guy, and down it comes. Very, very nice stuff. Let's have a look under the hood. Now, this is one thing that I could crab at Mercedes for a little bit. Oh, God, let me find the hood release. And that is the nomenclature on this car, uh, the S550. Well, that worked great when it had a 5.5 liter V8. Uh, but at a certain point, they went to this 4.7 liter twin turbo V8, uh, which uh, just doesn't have the same impact to say S. 470. So they kept it the 550, and uh, that uh, to me is a little bit of admission that Mercedes isn't as scientifically perfect as they'd like to claim to be. They do uh, pay a little bit of attention to what the market demands. So the market wants this to be an S550, not an S470, and that's what we got. So uh, anyway, jammed full of technology, twin turbos, you know, very, very efficient, while at the same time very powerful, about 455 horsepower, 519 pound-feet of torque. Uh, it'll turn the quarter mile in about 13 and a half seconds, zero to 60 and under five, uh, which is very impressive for a Leviathan like this thing. Uh, you can see right here, it's got these um, little radar sensors right in the grill. That's part of the Distronic Cruise and a variety of other safety features, including pedestrian collision. 
uh, warnings, which, it, you know, if it senses uh, one of these diseased peasants in front of you as you're driving around, uh, it will uh, eventually apply the brakes for you and prevent you from hitting him and getting a lawsuit. Which actually brings me to one of my favorite Andrew stories. Uh, Andrew's the guy we used to work with. He's the head of the service, uh, owns the service department uh, for Audi Europa. Uh, very interesting, very nice guy, a uh, giant asshole in a variety of ways, and uh, an extremely sinister person. And he bought, uh, at least I should say, a BMW i3, you know that little horrible German toaster, uh, at least one like the one that we had recently. And he read in a magazine article about it, you know, the night he got it, that uh, it had a pedestrian collision system. He thought, holy shit, okay, so I'm going to, so he gets robbed, the service rider, sticks him out in the middle of the road in front of the shop and proceeds to hit him at 15 miles an hour. The, the thing made no braking attempt at all, did absolutely nothing. Rob goes over the hood of the car, comes down, couple cuts and bruises. You know, again, this is Andrew. This is the way he operates. So obviously at that point they gave up and moved on. Well, no, again, this is Andrew. So they did it two more times to uh, try and make it come on. Never came on. Uh, later on that night, Andrew determined that his car was not equipped with that pack. So, uh, you know, that's just the kind of shit that honestly makes me love the guy and uh, why I like to keep him in my sphere. Uh, what <laughs> Fantastic human. Yeah, plus it was nice to see Rob get hit. Uh, honestly, he had that coming. Uh, anyway, this is made to do a uh, seven. Uh, you know, everyone went with that eight speed ZF uh, automatic. Mercedes has resisted. They've kept that great seven speed they've got, and uh, it shifts just fine and makes for a very nice uh, transmission in this car. Uh, this is not one of the all wheel drive versions, which is just fine. Just rear wheel drive. Those big murder wheels, ridiculous. Look at the size of the manhole cover brakes behind it. Okay, in the back seat, Mercedes put a lot of time and thought into making the back spore luxurious with one thing in mind, and that thing is China. Uh, apparently, S-classes used as chauffeured limousines are becoming incredibly frequent in China. So, Mercedes wanted the S to be uh, suitable for that. This is, of course, the long wheelbase version. Uh, we don't get the short one here in America. And uh, it's also the one that they'd be sending over to China. You know, there's got a big, ver there's Pullman versions, there's extended beyond this version. It's like six or seven or eight different uh, body styles, uh, you know, for this car, a coupe, convertible. Uh, but uh, anyway, this is the most standard and this is the one we get in the States. But uh, the reason that they put so much time and effort into making the back of this car luxurious and lovely is for the Chinese market. Uh, you can see it has power memory seats on both sides. Uh, those things will move to let you stretch out your legs, you can recline the seat back, uh, you know, all very, very nice stuff. Uh, you get this giant center console here, very nice, couple of drink holders, beautiful place to stuff uh, an elegant little uh, gold-plated 9mm if you're, uh, you know, again, the head of the syndicate, uh, you'd be able to get your gun in there, no problem, and uh, a couple of tumblers full of uh, Grand Marnier or whatever it is they drink. Uh, you also get a great little compartment back here to put something a little meaner if you need it, maybe an Uzi 9mm, Mac-10, uh, you know, something, maybe even a little paratrooper AK or something. Uh, you'd be able to get in there, grenades, also, I suppose, sandwiches and bottles of wine, so it's got that. Uh, up here, there's another I don't know what the hell that does. It's just a child seat retainer. And then you see that ambient lighting in the back. Uh, apparently it's got seven different uh, ambient lighting settings to match your mood. And uh, also, which I've left open, a nice big uh, uh, sunroof area, which you can shade if you need to. <laughs> and of course, like uh, all of these luxury cars, you've got this, I don't know what they get, Dynamica headliner or something. It's supposed to be suede, but isn't. And uh, if you need to powder your nose, then there you go. You got some mirrors there. You also got some oh shit handles with a nice leather wrap. Uh, I have to say that the quality of the interior, you know, now these are knurled metal. Uh, you know, where before they weren't. And that's the kind of stuff you find on Rolls-Royce and Bentley and uh, part of what makes it very, very cool and uh, very impressive that Mercedes was able to get it to that level 
uh, at that price point. Uh, just really neat stuff. Uh, being the Designio package, this has some special leather. You know, this is all beautifully wrapped leather. You've got the porcelain leather contrasting. You've got the piano black. Uh, it just all looks very nice and proper and uh, a lovely place to set. Also these power sunscreens and illuminated entry cells. So uh, absolutely very luxurious. You also get soft closed doors. Just get them close and they suck themselves in. Up front, uh, again, very gorgeous way this car was ordered. Love the contrasting uh, black and white porcelain and ebony, whatever you want to call it, uh, with the piping in the seats. They're ventilated, they're heated, they're just very, very nice all around. The ventilation system is pretty cool. Uh, it sucks for the first couple of seconds before it starts to blow. <sighs> you know what I'm saying. And uh, the reason for that is it apparently dries you off a lot better and uh, makes it uh, a little bit more comfortable for you. Again, all the lovely treatment on the door panels, the rich leather, the stitched, uh, uh, you know, contrasting stitching. Nice little place here to again, your chauffeur can put his 357 in there so he's ready to go. And, uh, you know, a very nice modern incarnation of the classic Mercedes door mounted seat switch. Uh, also a very trippy looking uh, speaker grill for these Burmeister uh, speakers. I mean, I start staring at that thing and I might get epilepsy. It's just uh, like one of those little uh, uh, kaleidoscopes you had as a kid. Uh, truly incredible. And I have to say that my complaint on Mercedes for the last few many years is that uh, they've gone from that incredible German craftsman uh, stuff where everything's sort of hand built, hand put together to something a lot more like Volkswagen and mass produced. Well, uh, they have managed to do the mass produced look with the fit and finish and a quality of materials that actually nullifies my complaints and uh, that is part of what makes an s and s hop in and fire it up you get ambient lighting behind the screens uh, you got these two giant rectangular screens uh, in the dash we've got keyless go so i just hammer that fire it up and you've got some really two-dimensional looking analog gauges facing you let's turn this shit down for a minute Get the seat bolt on, we'll see what we got here. You get my ventilated seats on as well. And turn this down a little bit. Okay, so here you go. So here's your instrument cluster, which is all virtual, uh, completely uh, made up from uh, LCD, but you know, doesn't look analog. Uh, little complaint here, that's the fuel gauge now, the 65%, this tiny thing. I kind of prefer having a needle or a dial or something. I, it's hard for me to see that. Uh, but uh, anyway, there it is. Uh, you've got this uh, thing in the center where you can uh, scroll through and get different, you know, trip computer, different display stuff. Of course, your miles. You go into each one and then you can go left and right somehow. And then you get into different stuff. So you can, you know, you can customize this thing a lot to see how you like it. Uh, you've got, um, uh, what the hell else do you have here? What the hell is this? A heated steering wheel? Is that a, oh no, that's steering, the DTR steering is a, obviously it's all steering by wire, this thing, uh, you know, designed to make you have feel and feedback, but it doesn't. It's all just, you know, basically the computer giving you the fake feel as it steers the car itself. On most cars, that bothers me. On this one, I get it. I mean, that's what an S-Class really is all about. Uh, it does have a blind spot. It has active blind spot, this car. So not only do you get the little yellow and red indicators if there's a car next to you, but if you move over and uh, the car is unhappy, it thinks you're going to crash because one of the seven cameras it has tells it it's going to crash, uh, it will actually apply brakes and steering to make sure you don't. So it's got that big German nanny there for you. Uh, what else do we have? We have this big giant navigation screen here, which is absolutely lovely to look at if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, you know, I'm glad it's not touchscreen because I don't like touchscreen. You end up with DNA all over your screen. I mean, it's nice initially, but then, you know, you use the thing for a week without cleaning and it looks like something you'd have in a crime scene or a cheap hotel. Uh, you know, using these 
uh, the controllers for the command system to me is much more elegant and uh, a much better way to do it. So of course you got your navigation, you got your uh, radio. Uh, this thing is some sort of uh, tune-in radio it's called. I can't remember exactly what it is, but I think that's it, tune-in radio. And what that does is uh, you can tune in streaming radio stations from around the world. Let's see if I can find that. Come on now. Oh, for the love of God, I should have played with all this before I before I did it. There we go, media, phone. Uh, okay, so it's just clicking radio. It's not going down for me, which is annoying as hell. But anyway, take my word for it. Uh, it <laughs> <laughs> streaming radio from around the world uh, into your navigations, your medias, your telephones, your so on, your so forth. Uh, you can get into your vehicle controls. Uh, let's see here. I like the way the screen comes driving up at you, your fuel mileage, so on, so forth, seat settings. And uh, that is neat stuff. In fact, this car does have, and I'm going to get them going right now, uh, six count them six different massage settings including hot stone so let's see I'm gonna put the driver massage on oh there we go let's go wide open oh no this is the backrest side. I don't want backrest sides I want the damn massage come on now front passenger oh for the mother god all right go back to here seat settings <sighs> Jeez, I should have driven this thing more where are we at there we go massage all right, passenger, driver, activating classic, mobilizing, active workout, decrease intensity, no, hot, relaxing, I don't want a hot massage, it's 95 degrees outside. Let's do a classic massage and see what we got. But anyway, uh, this is the way the rich live. You know, they've got massage seats on the way to work uh, if they go to work. And, uh, you know, here we are battling the world in our crappy little cars without massage seats. Uh, this is one reason why I'm not totally opposed to going downtown with pitchforks and taking these people out. Uh, massage seats might be a step too far. Uh, you see all these knurled or, uh, you know, machined aluminum vents that it has. You've got like six or seven on one, two, three, four, five, six, and the clock. Uh, that's supposed to look like a lady's necklace. Uh, that's what the designer said of it. Uh, why that is, I don't know. I mean, if that's supposed to give you a little bit of a stiffy or something, thinking you're looking at a broad with a nice necklace, on. Okay, fine. Uh, but anyway, that was their plan, as weird as I feel that was. Let's see, we've got AC on. Feels a little bit. Yeah, let's get that down a little bit. Uh, you see this Designio thing? Designio is, uh, and please don't say Designo. I can't stand it when people say Designo. Even if it were accurate, nobody should say it. Uh, but anyway, that's a Mercedes Benz design house, you know, sort of their Bauhaus type thing, where a bunch of frilly goofballs with bad haircuts get together and talk about what they should name a color. And, uh, you know, they come up with special trim and colorations and other stuff to. Uh, uh, to make these interiors a little more special. You have a real bona fide ashtray there if you're a smoker, nice stuff, good throwback. I guess only very rich and very poor people smoke anymore. Uh, you got more cup holders here and then uh, you got some kind of a, I think that's just a garage door remote he left in there. But anyway, you got stuff. I don't know what this flips down to do. Now there you can cover your garage door holder. But anyway, all very, very nice stuff. I'm not immediately sure how you release it but uh, I'm sure you can. Over here, and I want to get into this, you see you've got uh, the perfumery. Now this is a thing you can add perfume into that little jar. Mercedes gives you a few to start with, and that's going to uh, send the scent all around the car when you're running the air conditioning. Let me open this up so you can see it. All right, so here we've got uh, nightlife mood, sports mood, Pacific mood, and downtown mood. Uh, frankly, I'm looking for knee-walking drunk, Asian massage, bag of cocaine, wake up at four in the morning, not know where the hell I am mood. So if we could have one of those in here, that'd be fantastic. Uh, but uh, otherwise, you know, you see, this is the kind of stuff that drives me nuts. These are these frilly people, again, with the bad haircuts and the high salaries that get together in these little offices and feel important by coming up with names like sports mood. I mean, you know, it, God, if there's a revolution, you have another Joseph Stalin or, you know, whatever. These people are the first ones to get lined up against a wall and shot. And I may not be opposed to that. 
I have to think about that a little bit. Uh, up here, you've got self-dimming mirrors. You got your home link garage doors. All these LED lights everywhere. This was the first car I think that used zero incandescent bulbs. It had over 500 LED lights. Uh, it also has things like airflow strategies. It's got four different strategies for airflow in the car that you can set uh, with your climate control settings. I mean, it's just an absolutely ludicrous. So, AC off. Good lord, no wonder I'm not chipper. Let's get that on and make it freezing. Whatever asshole did that to me is going to pay. Uh, there's your little mouse set up here that, uh, you know, with the back button and the programmable star button. Uh, Airmatic suspension. This one doesn't have the magic ride, uh, which is both... Uh, and by the way, where the hell did Mercedes come up with magic ride? Magic this, magic that. I mean, give me a friggin' break. The, the, I mean, it sounds like something from a, you know, kid's magic trick set. A magic ride? I mean, for the love of God, Mercedes, uh, you know, come up with something a little bit better than that. But uh, anyway, uh, Magic Ride is a very advanced form of the old ABC suspension that uses the cameras to detect bumps in the road. And, uh, you know, if it sees a speed bump, you're coming up to it at 50, uh, it'll make the front shocks go completely limp, independent of each other if need be. And uh, you won't even feel the bump as you go over it. Uh, you know, this with the, uh, the standard air suspension doesn't give you that. But I also have to say, as time goes on, maintaining the Magic Ride versus maintaining Aromatic, uh, probably be happier with the latter. Love the little burled knobs. You know, this is the kind of attention to detail I like. The analog clock, you know, piss off, Mercedes, with your... I mean, can, have we not gotten to the point where the analog clock has been overdone? You know, do we really have to keep going with that? It's a yeah, definitive luxury car item. Let's put an analog clock in. All of them look cheap to me. You know, that looks like something you'd get at their accessory store that has a little AA battery in the back, but ah, whatever. And uh, down here, you've got, again, your command controls. This is sport versus economy uh, in terms of the engine setting, sport versus comfort in terms of the uh, suspension setting. Again, your massage seats, which are lovely. I've got that going now. Uh, volume. The little A with the circle around it, that turns off the... Um, uh, you know the way these cars stop at a, at a green light or a red light, and the engine shuts off to save gas so it can meet government standards. Uh, annoying as hell, and I love turning it off. Uh, in here, you've got, uh, oh, he's got left all his crap in there. You've got pens and a charger, and of course, a very nice place to put some handguns. Love the leather on the dash as well. Um, yeah, you know, just a real sweetheart. Uh, the steering wheel, uh, kind of a real nice piece of art. It's flat on the bottom with the Mercedes-Benz logo. Uh, you, you could really tell that when Maybach, Mercedes decided to get rid of Maybach, that they were then going to make the S-Class uh, almost equal to the Maybach line. Got a little bit of a squeaky steering wheel there. Uh, the one thing that I absolutely love about driving an S-Class is the ride. And I don't care which generation of S you have. Uh, it is... There's just something about it. It's this incredible mixture of floating on air, like you'd get in an old Lincoln Town Car or something. Uh, also, a little bit of a performance feel to it, the way the car re responds to your steering, the way it feels poised going down the road. Uh, you do still feel this mild connection to driving uh, that's missing in a lot of these luxury barges. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's all done electronically and you're completely completely detached from it. But my God, what an imposing, lovely feel this car has uh, when you're just driving down the road. You really get the chairman of the board feeling in this one. You get something for your 120 grand. There's the dynamic seat. There's a hammer. Turbo's kicking in. And I mean, that engine is screaming and you can barely hear it. The sound insulation in this car is just epic. Uh, they don't even bother giving you that little bit of V8 sound inside because you might like it. I mean, you just are detached. And that's the way it should be. I mean, again, if you're you know, trying to escape the paparazzi or a hit crew from a rival gang, uh, why should you be infringed with uh, you know, sounds and irritation that you uh, otherwise shouldn't be subjected to? You should have a nice, quiet ride.
where you can read the New York Review of Books or, uh, you know, do some injectable heroin or whatever these people are doing back there uh, without being bothered by uh, road interference. We don't have any pedestrians around to test that system. Uh, but there it is. I mean, the thing drives phenomenally well, obviously. I mean, it's an S. And uh, it, uh, you know, despite being just filled with every kind of ridiculous high-end autonomous feature, it has traffic, it has traffic jam assist. So up to 37 miles an hour, uh, you press the Distronic Cruise Control. Uh, and by the way, I never should, look how fancy this camera is. Look at all that crap. Very, very cool. But anyway, you press the Distronic Cruise, it goes into this traffic jam assist mode uh, where it'll steer the car left and right, uh, keep it in the lane using the cameras, and uh, run it up to 37 miles an hour and take that uh, menial task of keeping up in a traffic jam away from you. So, uh, very special stuff for Mercedes. We'll see if we can't see the roosters and run them over. Uh, uh, and it, by the way, a after 37, it gives you a light and a warning and beeps, but it will keep doing it. Beeps and warnings aside, uh, it'll go up to 125 miles an hour, and if the car in front of you panic stops, so will this. And uh, it just you know, detaches you from the need to worry too much about what's going on. Uh, also has active parking assist, so it'll turn the wheel for you into a... Uh, uh, all you have to do is work the brake and the gas, it'll parallel park for you, eh, you know, it wipe your rump for you as well, it's just one of those things, it's the future. Uh, hopefully the future isn't what I'm watching on the news right now, for the love of God, what is the matter with these purple haired nitwits? No idea, no concept. Uh, so anyway, there it is. I mean, I could go on and on and on. I mean, there's no time to go through all the features this thing has. It's absolutely incredible. But I'll just finish by saying that, yes, the S-Class is still the yardstick, is still the benchmark, is still the standard of the world for what a luxury car should be. And forget about, you know, taking it out on BMW and Audi. Mercedes is, there's the phone. Mercedes is coming after uh, Bentley and Rolls-Royce with this thing. You know, they've really, oh, for the love of God. I know it should have been on airplane mode. It wasn't. Deal with it. Uh, but anyway, they're coming after Bentley and uh, and Rolls Royce with this thing. They, you know, why stop with uh, why stop with their contemporaries? Let's get even higher. So a guy can maybe buy uh, a Benz that costs a hundred grand less and feel as luxurious, if not more, uh, than some of the uh, the Bentley products out there. And I think that's what Mercedes is up to. They want to, you know, bridge the gap between uh, what we think of as a mass-produced luxury car and uh, what they're capable of emulating in terms of a hand-built car. So anyway, ramble, 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 quit there. Uh, again, changes coming next week is, uh, uh, could be the start. So uh, we'll see where we go, but either way, we'll keep things going, not unlike they are now. And uh, I don't think a lot of people are even gonna notice that a change happened. So uh, thanks for having a look, really appreciate it. And a uh, little shout out to Ulf on this one. Thanks for uh, letting me borrow the car to do a video with. And uh, uh, we'll see everyone uh, next week. Take care.